Hand mixers are small, lightweight, and versatile. They can mix things such as cake batter, eggs, mashed potatoes, and more. In this video, we will investigate how the user can vary the speed of the motor, how the beaters are spun using a worm gear system, and how electric hand mixers cool down. So even at their fastest speed, the hand mixer can cool itself properly, greatly reducing the chance of the unit overheating and dying in the middle of mixing. The beaters are where the rubber meets the road for the hand mixer. They mix, beat, or whip ingredients by spinning opposite directions to each other, one clockwise, the other counterclockwise. Some people wonder how the beaters do not bang into each other as they spin so fast in opposite directions, even though they are intermeshed together. We will get into how this is accomplished later in this video. While beaters are the most common type of attachment to the hand mixer, there are other types as well. These additional attachments are generally sold separately. There is the whisk, rod blending, and dough hooks to name a few. My sister used to mix applesauce with different kinds of Kool-Aid to make different flavors of applesauce. Using dough hooks, we are going to show a flow simulation of the hand mixer mixing applesauce to give you an idea of what this mixing process might have looked like. As you can see, the applesauce is mixed via the counterclockwise spinning action of the dough hooks. To detach the hooks, simply press on the beater ejector button. The whole button will be pressed down, compressing these springs, as well as pressing on the beaters, pushing the beater tabs down past the attachment hub springs, which deform out of the way and snap back after the beater tabs have moved past. At this point, nothing is holding the beaters up any longer, and they will fall into the sink. Now let's look at what spins the beaters. Here are the worm and pinion gears of the hand mixer. This is the worm gear and these are the pinion gears. The pinion gears are on opposite sides of the worm gear, which is essentially a stationary screw. So, as it rotates, it forces the pinion gears to spin in opposite directions to each other. This is why the beaters also spin opposite to each other, because they are directly attached to these pinion gears. Let's take a closer look at these gears. Gears spin when their teeth are pushed. Because of this fact, gears spin the exact same way every time, no matter how fast they spin. So here you can see our two pinion gears with a red mark put into them. As you can see, because these gears are the same diameter and have the same amount of T, the red mark spins at the same rate on both gears, even though they are spinning in opposite directions. This is why the beaters do not hit each other, no matter the speed of the hand mixer. Let's show the beaters attached to the pinion gears. As you can see in this position, when the gears spin, the beaters would be hitting each other every quarter turn of the pinion gears. But if we offset one gear so that the beaters are also offset, now they will never hit each other because the geometry of the pinion gears are forcing them to spin in the exact same way every time. And since they started out offset, they will always continue to be offset no matter the speed they spin. The reasons the worm and pinion gear set are used in this application instead of another gear type is because they offer a very compact means of creating a lot of spinning force. The other major benefit to the worm gear is that it is self-locking, meaning when the worm spins, the pinion gears spin with it. But when the pinion gears are spun, say from a toddler who is exploring the world, the worm gear will not spin very far at all. The whole gear mechanism locks up, so there is no need to put any sort of braking mechanism in the hand mixer because the worm gear itself acts as the braking mechanism. The drawback of the worm gear setup is that it tends to be inefficient. A side effect of this inefficiency is that they produce more heat and noise than other gear sets would. This means it is generally used in applications that lean toward intermittent usage 
instead of continuous usage, which is exactly how hand mixers are used. They are only needed when mixing things together, which usually is not all of the time. To deal with this heat produced by the worm drive and also the motor, there is a fan connected directly to the drive shaft exactly like they do in a blender, which is something I show in a previous video that there is a link to in the description below. This fan spins at the same speed the motor spins, so the faster the motor spins, the faster the air inside the housing will vortex around the motor and gear set, cooling everything down and expelling the hot air out through these slots. Now, to what I consider the coolest part of a hand mixer, the speed control mechanism. This is the speed control switch. It is a dial that can be swung back and forth to speed up or slow down the hand mixer, position one being the slowest and position five being the fastest. As you can see, when the speed control switch is rotated, a copper connector attached to it will move over these copper contacts, breaking and making electrical connections to a series of different wires. Each wire goes to a different part of the electric motor's stator. The stator is the stationary part of an electric motor. In a hand mixer's motor, you will usually only see one stationary copper winding instead of two, like we saw in the blender video. This copper winding is typically called the field winding because it creates a magnetic field that engages with the rotor's armature windings, the rotor being the spinning part of an electric motor. This engagement generates power and rotational motion in the motor. If you unwound the field winding inside of a hand mixer, you would find it actually is not one large winding, but five smaller windings stacked on top of each other. The outermost winding is 200 thousandths of an inch in diameter. The other four windings are half as large at 100 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Swing the speed control switch to position five, which is the fastest position. The electricity will travel from the plug down the number five wire to this point on the stator. This is where it transitions to the one large diameter winding, then directly into the motor, spinning it very fast. Now that we see what happens at position five, let's take a look to see what happens at position one. The electricity is routed to a different location on the stator. From here, the electricity has no choice but to travel through the position one winding into the position two winding, then to three, four, and finally the fifth winding. Because of the placement of the position one wire, it is forced to travel through all five windings before it reaches the motor. If the speed control switch is set to position two, the electricity will be forced to travel through windings two, three, four, and five from over here. Position three only needs to travel through windings three, four, and five from here. Hopefully, you get the pattern by now. So we see that the electricity that goes through position one has to go through the longest amount of copper wire and position five goes through the shortest. Plus, positions one through four have a smaller diameter wire than position five does. So why does it matter if the position one winding is longer and has a smaller diameter when compared to position five? Well, as it turns out, electricity traveling through a longer wire encounters a greater resistance than electricity traveling through a shorter wire. The same is true of the diameter of the wire. Larger diameter wires put less resistance on the electricity traveling through them than smaller diameter wires. So, for our hand mixer, position 1 puts more resistance to the flow of electricity than position 5. If both positions receive the same amount of volts going into the device, then according to Ohm's law, position 1 will have a greater resistance and lower current than all the positions above it. This lowest current gives it the slowest motor speed. As the positions increase, the motor speed also increases because resistance decreases and current to the motor increases. Position 5 is the fastest of all, 
not only because it has the shortest winding, but it also has the largest diameter wire, decreasing its resistance even further. Now you know how a hand mixer works. These devices can be fairly cheap, but the engineering that goes into them is amazing. They can vary the speed of their motor by using natural laws that govern how electricity flows through wire. The two beaters can spin very quickly while intermeshed without hitting and interrupting each other. And they have a built-in safety mechanism so little kids or pets do not hurt themselves while spinning the beaters manually.